There we go. Hey, how you doing? Good morning, afternoon, whatever it is. Don't matter. Long time no see. Yeah. Hello, everybody. We're going to do another short segment today for the Maine Center for Coastal Fisheries here in Stonington, Maine. Answer some questions that have been called in. I hope you haven't lost patience with us. I've had a few uh, problems and had to overcome them so we could get back on the track here. Okay, we're ready. Elizabeth Bouquet from Switzerland. We're all loving your videos over here in Switzerland and I have a question. How long is it between when you put the bait in, drop it down from and to the time you pull it up? Thank you. Miss you. The average uh, set time, we call it, of leaving the trap down is three to four days. Most generally, no longer than that. If the bait has been eaten by the crabs and the lobsters, then the, the uh, lobsters and crabs will start eating each other in the traps. So it's very important to keep going around them and keep them cleaned out because there's a lot of juveniles in the traps that is our future. So we hope to take care of our industry by not destroying our own future. I hope that answers your question, and I'm glad you're enjoying our videos. That lady just called, I know her and her husband. Alex was her son. He was just a little fella, and he wanted a pot boy to take back to Switzerland. So I gave him one, and she said he could get on the plane and he wouldn't give that pot boy up for no amount of money. <laughs> he hung right on to it. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. All right, we got another question here. Okay. Uh, good morning, Leroy. Uh, this is Priscilla calling from East Greenwich, Rhode Island. Uh, my question, um, that I've wondered for quite a few years, is why is it the you lobstermen switched from the wooden lobster uh, traps to the metal? The uh, wooden ones seem to be, uh, I thought, a little more... Uh, stronger, but maybe I'm wrong. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Okay, to answer your question, the round trap, half round traps, or the square ones, were built out of oak. And the, the oak that they built them out of had to come from the choice part of the tree, which would be probably the first four or eight feet. And after, after years and years and years of harvesting the wood, that grows slowly, they had to come up with something else. The oak was, was uh, very durable in the water. It was also very heavy. But then they, they came out with the wire to replace the oak. They were lighter. They were easier to stack on the boat because they were rectangular in shape. And the mesh that they put in them is uh, regulated by each fisherman how big he wants the holes in the traps and how many heads, we call them heads, or the netting, how many that he wants to put in. So some traps are three feet, some are four. Now they got them up to 52 inches. So we call them the big box and they fish those offshore. The boats have changed, the boats are bigger and they can do a lot more with the bigger boats than they used to with little small wooden boats. And there's much more demand for the lobsters now than they were uh, years back when I started. Okay, I hope that answers your question. All right, here we go, question number three. Hey, Leroy, this is Bennett calling from Belfast. And uh, I've noticed more and more of these uh, fishermen going out for pogies or menhaden, the bunker fish, and catching them, I think, for bait, for lobster, and wondered, that seems like they've sort of kicked up recently in quantity and wondering if you've noticed that around Stonington, if more guys are fishing for bait these days than in the last couple of decades. Do you know why the, these fish are coming back? Any, any theories? Okay. Thanks. Love the show. Keep up the good work. See Thank ya. you. Thank you for your question. It's a good question. 
and I'll try to answer it the best I can. A lot of these, uh, Man the Manhattan has made a comeback, but they've also have put very strict quotas on it. You can only harvest so many in any given day. They use like a purse saying. They, they find the fish. I don't think that they're allowed to spot them with a plane. I think they watch for the this kind of business in the water. The When the water is flipping around like the mackerel do sometimes, then they, they will circle that area with a net and see what they can catch. We call the Manhattan and the uh, herring soft bait, and the hard bait would be redfish, rockfish, uh, and things like that. So uh, the rockfish comes from... British Columbia, shipped across Canada on trains, frozen. It's a dollar a pound to the fishermen. So that prompted a lot of, of uh, people to look around for different things. And, and a couple of the guys that I know didn't even set traps last spring because it was a off year. And they just went poggy fishing and sold a barrel of bait for like $125, which would be five bushel of bait which a box of herring, which would be a bushel and a half, was a hundred bucks. So it's came to the point where more and more fishermen are entering the fishery and they have to put regulations on to make sure that they have stuff to work with. So I hope that answers your question for you. It's a good question. All right. I think that's it for today. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, so if any of you other folks have any questions, no matter where you are in the world, we welcome them. There's no dumb questions. And you can call 224-58-LEROY. Put your question through and we will answer it as soon as we can. And uh, thank you very much for your questions. It's good to be back with you. Yeah. Okay, thank you folks for your questions. Keep them coming.